Now, hello, this is a note about uh, rum line routes and great circle routes, especially great circle routes, uh, to document some statements we make in our textbook. And uh, that's what I want to illustrate. And I'll use the program QTVLM for that. Here's a point one and point two. This is a rum line route. And a rum line route, by definition here on a Mercator chart, has a constant heading, a constant true heading. The magnetic heading will change along here, but the true heading will be the same the whole way. This is the curved route like this is actually the shortest route between the two points on a spherical Earth. We're assuming spherical Earth. So this is called the Great Circle Route. And it will always start at a heading that is poleward on the poleward side of the rum line. And here quite a bit, quite a bit north of that. And here you say, here's the rum line going this way, and this is the poleward side of that, and it'll start up that way. And so this, is a, this distance will be shorter than this distance, and this will have this initial heading. And the heading, if you notice, on the, on the great circle route, it changes continually as you're going along. Consequently, when you're actually uh, trying to navigate that way, you usually break it up into steps according to maybe longitude intervals or number of miles, and you do a little rum line route in between each one. Uh, that's not the subject at hand now. The subject at hand now is to discuss uh, an assumption that we, or, or a, a discussion that we have in the book, that this, this, uh, this type of great circle route is not often, we have to consider what it is, we always have to consider what, the, what it is, but it's not often we can sail that, and furthermore, it's not often that it matters that much just as far as the geography goes. And what I want to show here is a statement that we make that the significance of this great circle route as opposed to the simpler rum line route requires that the distance between A and B here be more than a couple thousand, two thousand miles, and that both, latitude, both, uh, both of the um, a start and destination need to be at a, at a relatively high latitude. And so that's what I just want to numerically show here now. And so let me, uh, well, let's, for now I can just say delete that guy. Yes, okay. And then on this waypoint here, what I'm going to do is draw in, say, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, rings at a, at a thousand. These are a thousand miles apart going across here. And then what we can look at is I just go here and use what's a ruler tool. And this is just set up. So this way, the nice thing about this is I see, just no matter where I move this, I see what the, uh, b the distance and the heading, uh, the initial heading. Remember, when, when you get the heading of a great circle route, it's always that initial heading right at the start. Then, then it's going to change. It's going to be higher than the rum line, then it's going to be uh, lower, uh, and so forth. And so, but the main thing is the distance. And so that means if I go like this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, if I'm 3,000 miles here, and then let's see, something like that, you see it's something like, well, 150 miles. So I'm saving 150 miles. If I'm going three, the distance is, uh, the distance, well, let me try to get that a little more right on 3,000. Or This ring is right at 3,000, something like that, you see. So that's 141 plus about four, 145 miles, something like that. So you, you sail 3,000 miles, and you're at high 48 north and 48 north, and you're saving about 140 miles. Uh, what is that? Yeah, about 145, 46 miles, which is not that much, really. But the problem is, look where this route goes. Now, I can't, uh, you see, it's going up here, hitting land. For one thing, it's hitting, uh, hitting the um, Aleutian Islands. And if it's not hitting the Aleutians, you know, like if you're going from here to Tokyo or some over here, and you're liable to hit the ice. You're liable to hit the ice even if you don't hit the islands. Now, yeah, just checking here in November, I'm just checking, and normally there'd be ice way down in there, but uh, now we have some global warming effects that actually change that reckoning. The ice is further north these days, a lot, actually. But that's not that, that point now. But here, so you see, if I go just 1,000 miles, 1,000 miles here, what am I saving? Just, you know, three or four miles, three miles or something. 
and 2,000. So that's the thing that even if you're at high latitudes, our argument is this is not even a geometrical consideration of any significant savings unless you get more than two or 3,000 miles. Now, once you get over here to, you know, say, what is this, one, two, three, 4,000 miles, then you see you're starting to, uh, that's 400, 400 miles, 437 miles. So then it makes a difference. However, it's totally impossible route to sail. You see where it goes, all the way up there. So it can be considered sometimes in cases like that. And then the other thing we do is look at, uh, we also say that uh, they both have to be, at, for, for it to be significant, both the starting point and the end point have to be at a relatively high latitude. So if this is 48, and I come down here to say 30, where's 30, somewhere around here. So here at 30, I'm at 2,000 miles, and you see I'm, um, I'm only saving about 20 miles, 20 miles. Whereas you look at the start, I've got a rather significant difference in the heading uh, and so forth. So 1,000 is almost nothing, no, almost nothing like that. And especially if you go further south, you see uh, that uh, you don't have much there. So that is the main thing I wanted to show uh, with, that, uh, with that guideline, that for the, for the geometrical advantage of a great circle route requires the, uh, really both, both the start and the end to be at a relatively high latitude and also at more than 2,000 miles. And I think, let me just see if I don't have that summarized here. Yeah, here's a summary. Here's a summary of what, of what we just did. You see at 4,000, I'm going to latitude 48 to 48, that's 4,000 miles, you're saving 400 miles. Then you get down here to 2,000, 2,000 miles, even at high latitudes, you're only saving 37 miles. And likewise, if you go up here at a, even a long distance, like 3,000 miles, look, one fifth, that's 48 to 48, down, now I'm 48 to 30, 48 to 20. You see the, dis, the, the amounts you're saving here, even at 3,000 miles, you're only saving 35 miles. So that's something, that's a, some realism to keep in mind. Now, if you have a program like this, it's in your face. You know it all the time what the advantage is. And we can't just let it go like that. Sometimes it's important to keep in mind like that when you're starting, uh, like when you're going to Hawaii or somewhere, sailing from, sailing from let's say, here. Uh, no, 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 I don't want that. Uh, I want to show the great circle, great uh, um, uh, ruler tool. When I'm sailing down here, and if I zoom in, zoom in on that, uh, let's see if I can move this. Well, what I want, the, the point I want to make, I, mean, I don't want to try to figure this geometry out in um, display in, in line. But what happens is here would be the great circle route. I mean, here would be the rum line route going to Hawaii, something like that. And then here would be the route going up, and it would be quite a bit higher if you're going great circle route. And so sometimes we're afraid that we're sailing too far north of where we want to go and on the start of an event like that, whereas in reality, you're actually on the shortest route. So it really doesn't matter, and often this a tactical advantage to sail really on the on the rum line route on the excuse me on the great circle route for a few two days maybe at the most but then you got to start diving south here for sure but there can be some tactical advantage of keeping in mind um, what the what the heading is for the initial great circle route I'll stop there